You son of a bitch. I told you. What did he do now? He don't listen to you. He don't listen to you. Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll be discussing things you need to avoid to have a healthy relationship. We'll look at how a so-called friend is trying to sabotage her friend's relationship out of pure envy, as well as advice from a man who shares what his biggest mistake was in his marriage. We want to invite you to smash that like button and help us reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year so we can get our first plaque. That's the only contribution we ask of you, man. Add your grain of sand to the movement. Share your experience in the comments for any man who might need it. And without further introduction, let's get started. I've already said it and I'm going to say it again. If you are in a relationship, be very careful whose advice you take. If you have a really good friend, but she is low value and you have a problem in your relationship and you tell her about it and she gives you advice, the chance of that advice being low value is like 90%, 95 and if you take that low value advice, you might sabotage your own relationship even more. I've seen it happen so many times and actually relationships or like the, the people breaking up because of advice that was taken from a low value friend. If you take advice because you have a relationship problem, make sure it's high value advice. So for example, if you and him have a fight and it's really not your fault, and you talk to your friend about it and she says, why don't you just apologize to him? Why don't you just reach out to him? That is low value advice that you should not be taken. And that's just a simple example. I think the problematic friend here is you. In my opinion, it's not a good idea to discuss your relationship with single friends. I've seen this a lot with both men and women, divorced women, party girls, single women, or those who like to cheat on their partners are terrible at giving advice. The same goes for both men and women. It's well known that a woman's worst enemy is another woman because women don't have friends. They have competition. A good friend will speak well of your husband and give you good advice, like what she called low-value advice. Why not apologize? Why not get closer? It's not bad advice. She sees the situation from the outside and can see that you're not in the right. But women often see this as a bad thing. What they want is for the friend to take their side to tell them that their husband is wrong. All this does is turn a small disagreement into something that eventually breaks the relationship. Watch the next video. It explains this better. My wife and I, we start dating and all of a sudden uh, we start having fights. And after we fought, she would always come back a little bit weird. I'm like, huh, interesting. I said, so let me ask you a question. She said, what's that? I said, say we're married. Said, we have a terrible fight. Who are the five people you're gonna call? So she gives me the names. I said, okay. Uh, uh, I said, you call these five people, guess who they're going to defend? She said, who? I said, you. I said, let me tell you who my five are. My dad, Dudley, Bill, and I gave the five minutes. I said, if I call these guys, guess who they're defending? You. I said, in order for marriage to work, the five people I call when I'm pissed off, they have to defend you. And the five people you call, they have to defend who? Me. Wow. Which family should have said what? Listen, guys, you guys go make it work. That man works hard. That man's your, hey, look at your wife. She cooks, she takes care of the kids. So it's not bigger than exactly. Yeah, they give you context. Yeah, so that was the one thing. And then wow. she went and got their father and said, okay, now I'm comfortable. I hope that when Michaela finally meets David, she'll just change her mind about him and just realize that David and I are made for each other. So I've heard a lot about you, David. How have you liked being here so far? I've been having a great time with uh, Evelyn, Evelyn's family. You were friends with Evelyn for a long time, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. The second Michaela showed up, I think David kind of shut down or at least put up some kind of barrier, some kind of wall that he was obviously expecting her to be cold. I did hear like you weren't really a big fan of me coming. Um, not exactly. There's your age for one. Eight and a half years is substantial, especially with Evelyn only being 18 years old. I just feel like you could just my judgment. I trust your judgment, Evelyn, but I don't know David, so I can't like someone I don't even know. All right, so this is David's welcome party. Did you just come to like judge him and size him up? No, I came because you invited me to come. And well, I, wa I, wa I want you guys to be friends oh, and or at least like each other. I'm happy you're here. It makes Evelyn happy. But because I don't know you individually, I like to wait for me to see how I view someone's character before I'm automatically 
good friends with them. I don't want this to cause problems for us. And if you don't like David, then you're disrespecting me. Michaela seems to have an attitude towards me. It's my welcome party when like everyone is happy about me being here. She bringing her concerns up. I was a little bit disappointed. I haven't given you any reason to dislike me. So far, I felt welcomed by everyone except you. I'm just hesitant with how things, how fast things are going. You're not really financially ready for all of it yet. Finances are a big thing. That are you dating someone currently? I am not. OK. It's just like you sound like someone who's not dating anyone. David was definitely a little aggressive, and he made the comment about me being single, and that really upset me. <laughs> I just want to make sure she's happy. And if that's with David, that's great. But I want them to, instead of just brushing me off, to really actually think about what I'm saying, instead of just not caring my opinion. Stop talking oh about God. your relationship to other people. When you get married, form a two-handed circle. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody else in that circle. Because they don't, if you let your mama in, she going to mess it up. Yeah. You can't let your friends in, they going to mess it up. Form a two-handed circle, don't let nobody in it. Did you see what I was talking about? The single friend wanting the other friend to be in the same situation as her. Why? Out of envy. Seeing that one friend already has a relationship that she hasn't been able to break, and now the other friend who was in the same situation has found a partner, she clearly feels it will be even more obvious that she's the single one in the group. What is she doing? Sabotaging the new relationship. Women don't have friends. They have competition. In most cases, that so-called friend is just envious. Analyze your friends. Not all of them have good intentions. That's why I don't support speaking badly about your partner with friends. If you need advice, go to the person with the happiest marriage you know. They might have gone through what you're experiencing and will give you good advice. But avoid going to your mother, sister, or cousins. Never damage the image of your woman in the eyes of your family or friends, because in a moment of anger, you and she might forgive each other, but your family might never forgive her or might hold ill will against her. This applies to both genders. Want to stop fighting with your partner all the time? Then you have to start doing this one thing that I do in my marriage. And this is also what I teach all my clients how to do in their marriages. And if you can start doing this, you will eliminate the fighting in your marriage. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm an RLT marriage coach. And I've been working with couples and individuals with my husband, Ned, for over 10 years. This one thing that you can start practicing today that will eliminate the fighting in your marriage is don't talk. Just keep your mouth closed when you are triggered. You've got to understand that any human being at any point in time can get activated and taken over by their nervous system. And when that's the case, it can say things that are mean or hurtful. We all do it. And you'll know when you're activated, when you feel annoyed by your partner, when you're angry at them, when you feel hurt by them, and you'll hear that same story come up for you about them and, and how they annoy you and whatever way they annoy you. Know that you're triggered and that you're in fight or flight for whatever reason in moments like that and keep your mouth shut until you are calm and regulated and can come from a mature place and have a mature conversation with your partner from the place of feeling grounded after you've done some work on yourself. Communication is necessary, absolutely, but not when you're activated. So try this out. Let us know how it goes. You can do this and make sure to keep following us for more content on how to master yourself and master your marriage. Oh my God! Wow! You see, this is really good advice. I have a friend who, when an argument with his wife started to get heated, would walk two blocks away. When he came back, he would approach the conversation from a calmer perspective. He said that if he acted explosively in the moment, he might say something he would later regret. This is why men are often advised to read books on Stoicism. Stoicism teaches you discipline, teaches you how to deal with your problems, but most importantly, it teaches you how to remain calm in the worst situations. A masculine man is not reactive. Women are reactive. When they're angry, they yell, raise their voice, and won't stop talking. If you, as a man, start doing the same, 
you'll lose the battle and her respect. The best thing you can do is keep your mouth shut, let her say everything she needs to say, and then, firmly and calmly, give your opinion when she finally stops talking. It was the greatest mistake I made in my marriage. And if you're doing this, man, I beg you to stop now. Never frame your wife. Never put her in a portrait that is negative around your kids and your buddies and your coworkers, especially women. Frame your wife the way you want her to be not only treated, but the way that you want her to become. Watch your marriage change. Follow for more. What do you do if you have a partner that brings in other people's opinions into your relationship? You gotta tell your partner to knock that shit off. There's nothing that pisses me off more than that. The relationship is between you and me, not me and five other people. I've been in situations where other people's opinions were always being put into the equation. Oh, well, this person said it. I don't give a fuck. I don't fucking care. It's irrelevant to me what somebody else's opinion is of your relation, of my relationship. And it should be the same for you. Like, stop talking to people. Like, stop talking to people. Stop getting people's opinions. They have no idea what's going on. Oh, well, my friend said blah, blah, blah about you. I've never even met them. What an ignorant idiot to think that. When somebody comes to me with a problem and they're talking about two people, I'm like, yeah, that's great, but I don't have both sides of the story. Like, dude, that's just common sense. Absolutely. These are two very good pieces of advice. If you want to change your woman's behavior, treat her well in front of her friends, your friends, or your family. Say nice things about her give her compliments, and when she's with her friends, greet her with love. I bet this will bring many good things to your relationship. Remember, women are emotional beings. They make decisions based solely on how they feel. If you make your woman feel happy and others praise her, she'll return that to you. What the other man said is completely right. As I mentioned, sometimes a small problem keeps getting worse because either your woman or you are bringing outside opinions into your relationship. Not good opinions but toxic advice from your single friend, or in the case of the woman, from her divorced mother or single friends who hate men. If you find yourself in a situation where you have to defend your girl in front of your friends or family, then you are in the most toxic place for your relationship. Don't shoot the messenger, but let me explain why opposite sex friends are a catalyst for marital breakdown. One of the reasons people advocate for opposite sex friends when they're married to an opposite sex spouse is because they're not properly integrated. Integration means very quickly being self-aware and accepting oneself, bringing in all the subconscious and darker parts of you into your consciousness and making peace with them, being your whole authentic but best self. So when you're not integrated, you compartmentalize your personality. These people haven't fully surrendered themselves to their spouse, whether they're also not fully surrendering to themselves and therefore they cannot surrender to their spouse, or maybe they just choose not to. They're denying and suppressing aspects of their identity because they don't fit the narrative of the marriage. Basically, they're playing a role. Now, maybe this role is a big part of them, but if you cut a core part of yourself out of the equation, you're going to suffer psychologically, and your marriage is going to stagnate or even deteriorate. Here's how you can tell if this is happening to you. If you get to express an alternative side of yourself with your opposite sex friend that feels refreshingly freeing, this is a telltale sign of a lack of integration and a deficit in the secure attachment with your spouse. Even if from the outside it looks like you have a great marriage, and maybe you do have a good marriage, but it's incomplete. And this will wear on you. You see, it's not always the friend that creates the friction. It's what they represent and bring out of you, your shadow side. Worst case scenario, this is a symptom of poor compatibility because you didn't do a good job of vetting or you consciously chose to force it because you were so invested in making it work. If this is the case, it is very hard to make it work because you have to deconstruct the marriage and build it back up like two different people and see if you can find a way to meet in the middle and get on the same page. But it is possible. Now, if you wanna ensure that you vet for your future spouse and your ideal relationship properly so that this does not happen to you, you need to get my ebook, The Vetting System. Link is in my bio. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. I don't know what people are smoking in the morning, but it must be strong. What this woman is saying is just that some friends encourage your bad behavior and others don't. When you have a partner, you owe them respect, which means you have to sacrifice certain things for your relationship. Sometimes this includes time with certain friends, 
Having friends of the opposite sex isn't bad. The problem is what kind of friend they are. When a man has a woman as a friend, if he truly sees her that way, he treats her simply as a friend. He won't pay for things for her, won't be doing all sorts of favors, and doesn't have any responsibility toward her other than being a friend. Now, if your woman says she has male friends, but you notice these guys are acting like simps, they have romantic intentions. Those are not her friends. They are just guys stuck in the friend zone, waiting for you to make a wrong move so they can take your woman. That's why I always say to pay attention to behavior. If your woman has a male friend who is married or in a stable relationship, then he's likely just a friend and sees her that way. But if it's a guy who's constantly texting your woman, paying for everything, inviting her to trips and expensive restaurants, he's not a friend. He's your competition. He's the guy your woman sees as a backup plan. This also applies to relatives who suddenly appear out of nowhere, like the so-called cousin. We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. Has a third person, a friend of your wife, ever spoken badly about your marriage? Have you ever had problems because someone else tried to ruin your relationship? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.